Hi guys, welcome to chapter 4 of our control engineering and in this chapter we'll be looking at control system block diagram. You, from your electronics you know what a block diagram is and the advantage of using a block diagram. When we are using a block diagram we are not concerned about the actual implementation of a circuit. We are not concerned about what will be inside the block diagram. We will be concerned about the input and the output. So we'll be looking at block diagram in control engineering as usual motion marf is my name and motion marf at gmail.com is my email address also if you want to get in touch with me via social media plus two six three seven one seven five three five eight six six is my whatsapp number otherwise let us enjoy block diagram under control engineering we know that a control system is made up of a number of components that are connected to form a desired function. We know that these components vary in nature and they may be electrical, hydraulic, kinematic, mechanical, to number just a few. So we are saying control theory is not concerned with the physical nature of the components as I have said or the type of energy exchange that may be taking place between them. And we are saying once a component is reduced to a mathematical model, it can be represented as a black box with the component operation described by the mathematical function or equation. And this is repeated for all the parts of the system. So the system is reduced to a number of interconnected black boxes. This interconnected connected black boxes can be combined into a single block or mathematical expression. This overall mathematical expression contains all the necessary information about the performance of the original control system. This uh, greatly simplifies analysis and design of control systems whereby the signal flow between these components is of most concern. So this is just explaining the advantage of using control system that we are using a mathematical equation or function. Let's have a look at basic elements that make up a block diagram and we are starting with a block. What is a block? This is the block which we use mostly in our electronics even when we are designing the block diagram of a power supply etc etc. So what is a block? This is a rectangular box or a symbol that explains the mathematical operation on the input to produce a corresponding output. The flow of information is unidirectional. We have got one input in one direction and a corresponding output in the same direction of the input. What is a transfer function? We looked at a transfer function in chapter uh, 3 and we are saying it is also part of a block diagram. So what, I I what is it? We are saying the mathematical function of each block is shown by inserting the corresponding transfer function of the element inside the box. So inside the box we put the mathematical function of each block that shows the relationship between the input and the output of that particular block. What is a summing point? This is a symbol that shows the algebraic summation of two or more signals. And why are we saying summation? Because it can be addition, it can be subtraction. So we are saying the plus or minus sign at the end of each arrow indicates whether the signal is added or subtracted. When it is a plus, the signal is added mostly to the friend's input and when it is a minus, it is subtracted. What is a takeoff point? This is a point from which the signal is taken if you want to feed it back to the input or if you want to distribute to other blocks. What is a directional arrow? A directional arrow is simply, you know what an arrow is. It is simply a symbol that indicates the direction of flow of signal and this is from one block to the next block. These are examples of or it shows some block diagram elements and we are saying this is our block and we said it is made up of a rectangular block and this is our transfer function it shows the relationship between C of S which is the output and R of S which is the input and we know that G of S is supposed to see of S divided by R of S. This is our directional arrows from left to right. This is the, the, the takeoff point. This is the takeoff point and as you can see we are taking up a signal and, feed, and, feed, and feeding it back to the input and we are also sending a signal to the in this direction. What is a summing point? As you can see this is a circle and this is our input. It is fed back. This is our signal. We are feeding back to the input. So we are saying this is the summing point. As you can see this is a minus and this is a plus and we are saying we are subtracting the two and obviously the feedback signal P of S is being subtracted from the input signal and we call this an error signal. 
we say this is our block this is our input into the block the output out of the block end in this direction and we are saying the block represents a component or a combination of several components of a system the block is a signal input as well as a signal output and inside the block we've got a transfer function with this a mathematical expression usually all power connections to this block are, are omitted for, for simplicity or for clarity purposes so we are saying this our input Input, which is the reference input is R of S, which is a Laplace transform a Laplace transform of R of T. The mathematical function or the transfer function inside the block is G of S, which is the ratio of C of S divided by R of S. Our output is the response or the desired response of the system, and it is equal to we know this is equal to this times this. So what is a directional arrow? This is a directional arrow from left to right, and it is indicates the direction of flow of a signal. This is also a directional arrow. This is also a directional arrow showing the movement of a signal from left to right into and out of each block or along a circuit. This is our takeoff point and we are saying this is our input. If this is our input which is x of s, it means that we are taking the signal there which is x of x and feeding it there. We are taking the signal, distributing it and we are also distributing it in this direction. So we are saying there is a point where two or more circuit lines are physically joined together. They are joined at this point allowing separate signals to combine into one signal or to allow a single signal to split. In this case we are, split, we are splitting it in two separate lines. In the second case, it is assumed that the divided signal is of the same amplitude phase as the original signal. If we are splitting it. We say that this is a summing point and this is an, an input arrow, an input arrow, an input arrow, and this is our output arrow showing that how do you find C of S? It is equal to the algebraic sum of X of S, Y of S, and Z of S. So we are saying the plus sign showing that we are subtracting this showing that we are adding so we can safely say x of s this must read y we correct it y of s and z of s are the inputs while c of s is the output and it can be written as c of s is close to we are adding this we are subtracting this and we are adding this hence this is correct so we are saying there is a point where two signals are either added together or subtracted from each other not that despite the fact that the two signals may be subtracted from each other it is still called a summing point please take note the sign is shown at the end of the arrow we are subtracting this we are adding this and we are also adding this if sign is positive if sign is a plus positive feedback is being used in the system and if it is negative negative feedback is being used in the system and we subtract for if we are using a plus sign we add we've got two directions of movement of the we have two directions in which the signals can move we've got what we call the forward path and the backward path and we are saying the direction of all flow of signal from input to the output is what we call the forward path and the figure shows a forward path and individual uh, blocks are gs gs is gs1 gs2 and gs3 in, in other words this is the gain of the first stage gain of the second stage and gain of the third stage but the flow of a signal from the output to the input we call it the feedback path as you can see we are taking a signal from the input and feeding it back to the output end this is negative feedback in other words we will subtract it from the input arrow of s and this this feed the the transfer function in the backward direction we call it the h of s a, re a, a review of our electronics we are saying we've got what to call gain aid it may be considered an, another way of saying the transfer function and it is used primarily in electronics or in communication engineering to show the amount of of amplification of an amplifier or an amplifier system and we know that it is the ratio of the output to the input whether it is voltage or, or current as long as it is the ratio of the output Put to input we call that gain and gain can be positive it can be negative then we've got what we call the positive feedback you also covered this in your electronics course and we are saying this is a condition found in certain control systems where the output is coupled back to the input in phase please take note of this phrase in phase 
so that there is a continuous re-amplification of original input signal and mathematically this is how you express positive feedback please take note that there is a plus there for a negative feed negative feedback we are saying we feedback the input the output signal back to the input signal but it will be out of phase with the input so that we are able to cancel a portion of the input signal and mathematically v out of v in is equals to we know that gain this is beta 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 you know the about the pack Hussein criteria and we are saying gain the symbol for gain is capital letter a divided by one minus it's now a minus sign it's no longer a plus is in positive feedback then gain times beta we are now re revisiting our closed loop control system or block diagram and we are saying this is our summing point this is our feedback path this is our forward path and this is a block this is a, a block and we are saying the block diagram consists of a forward path from input to output and a feedback path from output to input a forward path and a feedback path and we are saying this is the laplace transform of the reference input r of t and this is the laplace transform of the output c of t and we have got what we call the error signal which is meant to make sure that we get the output that is nearer the desired output and we are saying the error signal is this e of s and it is the laplace transform of e of t then the p of s which is this is the laplace transform of the feedback signal b of t and we are saying c of s is the equivalent for the path transfer function which is the this h of s is equivalent feedback path transfer function feedback path transfer function or the path transfer function uh, block diagram rules for reduction and we are saying any complicated system can be simplified by reduction of block diagrams and the following rules must be added to or must be followed we've got what we call rule one or the associative law we know this from mathematics and we are saying we've got two summing points this and this and we are saying first summing point r1 of s r2 of s when we can see that this is a minus sign also the so the output is we are subtracting this from this we are subtracting this from this then when we get to the second summation point we are adding the two so we can safely say r1 of s minus r2 of s plus r3 of s this is our output and in b the positions of the summing points are interchanged but the output you'll see that it will remain the same as we can see we've interchanged the two and we can safely say r of s is now this and two are now adding so we can say R1 of S plus R2 of S minus R2 of S. We are subtracting this from the sum of the two. So we are saying we call this the associative law. So if any block is placed in between the summing points, by interchanging the summing points, it can be shown that the output will not be equal. Please take note that if ever there is a block in between the two summing points, if there is a block there and also there is a block there, the associative law will not hold. Rule number two on block diagrams is concerned about blocks that are connected in series or in cascaded. For example, this shows blocks that are connected in cascade or in series. In other words, this block, this block, and also these blocks are connected in, in cascade or in series, one after the other in other ways. And we are saying this block can be reduced to this block. And let's see how you will proceed. In other words, you must be able to prove that this is equal to D to do this and this is this is done mathematically and we are saying r1 is g1 of s multiplied by r s r2 is g2 of s multiplied by by r1 s we can re we can replace this r1 s by g1 s times r s so we can safely say the overall output c of s is equal to g3 multiplied by r2 but we know that our this is equal to this so we are going to replace r2 by this expression which is this expression so we can safely say c of s c of s is equal to g1 g2 and g3 and the input is rs which is this input we now want to find the transfer function of blocks that are connected in in cascade or one after the other so we can safely say c of s divided by r of s 
gives us G1, G2, and G3, which we can say to be the gain of the first stage multiplied by the gain of the second stage multiplied by the gain of the third stage, which is equal to the, the transfer function of the first stage multiplied by transfer function of the second stage multiplied by the function by the transfer function of the second stage. So the outputs in both cases are identical. In this case, gains are multiplied. So let's have a, a hint. If the if there is a summing point or takeoff point between the blocks, which means between G1 and G2 or between G2 and G3, the uh, blocks cannot be said to be in cascade or in cascade. You remember your series resistor and parallel resistors. Please take note of that. These three blocks are connected in cascade. There are four, rather, they are connected in cascade. These four blocks are connected in cascade. The transfer function of the first block, of the second, of the third, and of the fourth, the input and the output. And the we are asked to find the transfer function of the block diagram. So how do you find the transfer function? These blocks are connected in cascades. So we are saying this is equal to this multiplied by this, multiplied by this, multiplied by this. That is G1. G2, G3, and G4. So if we multiply this, this is going to give you 110 times 50 times 200. Then this is plus 3, and the denominators 1, 2, 3, 4. They are there. G1, G2, G3, and G4. Please, we are simply taking it from this expression. G2, G3, G1, or G1, G2, and G3. This is what we have done. Then another rule for reducing block diagrams and this applies for blocks that are connected in parallel is shown you know your parallel circuits and we are seeing these three are connected in parallel because they have got two points in common this point and this point and we are saying this block is identical to this block we've got our main blocks one two three and we have reduced the two we have reduced these two just one block with a transfer function of g1 of s minus g2 of s plus g3 of s so you might be asked to prove that this is identical to this and is as demonstrated before you do this using mathematical function and let's start from there we are going to say c of s is this is a summation the summing point other one of s minus this because of this minus and plus this because of this plus so r1 of s minus r2 of s so c of s is equal to r1 of s minus r2 of s plus let me correct this and we know that r1 of s is equal to g1 of s multiplied by r s then r2 is equal to g2 of s which is this multiplied by r of s and R3 is equal to G3 of S multiplied by R S because this is a common. This is a, a takeoff point. We are distributing the signal to this block, to this block, as well as to this block. So what are we going to do? Our, our R S is common, so we are going to factor it out. And thereafter, we are going to take the transfer function. And it is going to be G1 of S minus G2 of S plus g3 of s and this is just one block hence this block so guys take note you might be asked to prove that this is identical to the to, to this and you do this mathematically another rule we are saying we've got three blocks connected in parallel and we saw that this is the way how it is reduced to just one block and we are saying we are adding them algebraically and we say this rule cannot be applied applied directly if a takeoff occurs as shown below these two blocks have got a takeoff block uh, in between g2 of s and the summing point we have got a takeoff point and we are saying this rule will not apply. We are saying a takeoff point in between a block and a summing point. This is our takeoff point. And we are saying it is always advisable to shift this takeoff point to a point before G2 of S as shown. So this point must move up to before G2 of S. And this is shown by the dotted line. And it is always better to avoid shifting the takeoff point after the summing point. You must avoid shifting this takeoff point to the blocks after the summing point. So we must, must shift it in this direction.
A worked example to determine the transfer function of the block shown below and these blocks are connected in cascade and there's no summing there is no takeoff point between any of these blocks and the summing point so we are going to proceed and how do we proceed when the blocks are connected in, in parallel we simply add 1 over s plus 2 over s plus 1 plus 3 over s plus 3 find the common denominator divide this into this multiply by the numerator just as what we do and we are going to expand this it is going to give us this and we are going to simplify this is our transfer function 6x squared plus 13s plus 3 divided by s s plus 1 in bracket is plus three. Rule number four is used to eliminate feedback and this is our feedback that we want to eliminate. Let's go mathematically and see how we are going to proceed. We are saying the error signal E of S is equal to this minus this take note that this is negative feedback with the minus so it is subtracted from the reference signal which is R of S. But we know that B of S is equal to, how do we find B of S? B of S is there, it's given, but let's hold on, we'll come, we'll come back to it, let's proceed. We know that C of S, this is our C of S, it is equal to C of S, but we know that E of S is equal to this, so we are going to replace E of S by this, and we have replaced it there. If we expand, this is going to give us g of s multiplied by r of s minus g of s minus b of s. We are now going to replace b of s by this expression and we are going to arrange like terms together. We are going to factor out c of s and we are going to make c of s the subject of the formula. In other words, we are going to find the transfer function which is equal to this and this is going to give us this. This shows that we now have got one block. We now have got one block and this is our block. Let's see. This is our block in the next slide. So this shows that this is equal to this. You might be asked to prove this. So if you are asked if you are given this expression or identity and you are asked to prove, you do this mathematically and this is how you proceed from there to there. This is easy guys. This is how we eliminate feedback. So in other words, we are making the implementation of this block very easier by just substituting it with this block. Take note that we simply implement this mathematical function inside the block. Why are we saying we've eliminated the feedback from there to there? Simply, there's no feedback. In other words, we only have got this one block. We have removed this feedback block and we've got only forward path and no reverse path or feedback path. So we have replaced the mathematical model in the block by a transfer function of g of s divided by 1 plus or minus, depending on whether it is positive or negative feedback, g of s divided by h of s. A worked, ex a worked example, we saw that to eliminate the feedback path, C of S divided by R of S was G of S divided by 1 plus or minus G of S divided by H of S. And we are saying the plus is used when we have got a negative feedback and the minus used when we have got a positive feedback. And the question goes, determine the transfer function for the block shown below. And this is the block. So we are going to, these two blocks are connected in cascade. We are going to reduce. We are going to say this multiplied by this and this is going to simplify this s is going to cancel with one s there and this is going to be our expression of the transfer function of these two blocks connected in cascade we are going to eliminate the feedback path so that we remain with one block so we are going to say what is our g of g of g of s multiplied by h of s this is going to we are going to multiply this by this so this s and this s are going to cancel so it's going to be six divided by s plus 1 in brackets s plus 1 which is 6 divided by s plus 1 squared to eliminate the feedback loop we are going to find the overall transfer function and this is equal to c of s divided by r of s which is equal to g of s divided by 1 minus g of s h of s this is our g of s and this is going to be divided by 1 minus g of s is this g of s multiplied by h of s is this expression so if we simplify this we are going to get this expression so we can represent this by an input one block 
with this transfer function inside the block and the output c of s so this is equal to our characteristic equation so what are we going to do we are going to set this to zero for us to form a characteristic equation so let us do this for it to be a characteristic equation it must be set to zero Number five, we are going to shift the summing point to a point before a block. We are going to tap this and we are going to put it there, which is before a block as it is, it is after the, the block. So when we have done that, this is going to be our block diagram. So let's analyze if the, the response is going to be the same. So we are saying Fig A shows a system in which the point needs to be shifted to a point before g as shown by the dotted line which is this dotted line but let's analyze a first the response c of s is equal to g of s we are adding because of this plus n plus x of s and from b we are going we have got c of s which is equal to this c of s is equal to g of s multiplied by in brackets we've got r of s plus one over g s and we know that this expression there, the output of this expression is x of s divided by g of s, hence this expression. Let me put, let me close this, let me close this, so it's now okay. So this expression there is multiplying the sum of this and this. Let's try to simplify this to see if this circuit works the same as this circuit. If we expand, this is going to give us g of s multiplied by r of s plus this g of s and this g of s are going to go cancel. Hence, this expression is the same as this expression. Hence, we can afford to shift this. We can afford to shift this to a point before the block diagram. But please take note of what happens to this expression there, so that it will op this circuit will operate the same as this circuit. Therefore, we are saying the output in both cases are the same. Rule number six deals with the shifting of a summing point to a point after a block. This is a summing point that you want to shift to a point after this block, which means to this point. And in B, we have shifted this summing point is now after the block. And what modifications are we going to make to G of S so that the two operates the same? Let's analyze A and we'll thereafter analyze B to see if they operate the same. So we are saying C of S is equals to G of S multiplied by the sum of these two, R of S plus X of S. Please take note that it's positive feedback. And let's go to B. B, we have got C of S is equal to, let's go to B. B, it's after shifting the summing point to this point. Let's analyze our C of S. What is our C of S? C of S, uh, please take note that this is equal to R of S. So it's G G of S times R of S plus G of S X of S is shown. So if we expand this, this will be the same as this. So we can safely say it is possible to shift a summing point to a point uh, after the gain block. Therefore, the outputs in both cases are the same. Rule number eight, shifting of a takeoff point to a point after the block. We, in the previous slide, we shifted it. We shifted the takeoff point to a point before the block. So we are going to shift it from before a block to after a block. But let's see if this is the way how you are going to modify the circuit in Fig B so that they respond the same. Let's analyze A. We know that X of S is equal to R of S. Let's go to B. How is P B B F -ing? We are saying X of S, this is X of S in this direction, is equals to C of S, which is the signal at this point, multiplied by 1 over G of S. And if we can expand it, 1 over G of S, which is equals to this, this point is the same as saying G of S multiplied by R of S. If we simplify this, it's going to give us R of S. So we are saying X of S is the same as R of S and also X of S is the same as r of s so we are saying xs in both cases are the same x of s in both cases are the same shifting of takeoff point before a summing block takeoff point before a summing block this is our summing block this is our takeoff point we are going to shift it from there to there so we have got initial solution then we have got we've now shifted it so we are saying this is 
after shifting the takeoff point then this is going this must be our correct configuration let's see fig a shows the initial situation of the takeoff point this it is there so let's analyze our what is our x of s our x of s is equals to r of s plus or minus y of s because this is the output in b was our r of s our r of s is equal to z of s therefore we can say in this case z of s z of s is not equal to x of s z of s is not equal to x of s in c the signal y s which is this signal y s is added to to z of s in this summing point by the summing point with the same sign so we are saying in this case z1 s mind you this is the output is equal to r of s which is the input there plus or minus y of s which is equal to this therefore we can safely say x of s x of s let's have a look at this and let's have a look at this there's the same so we can simply say x of s this x of s is equal to z1 of s this x of s which is this is equal to z1 of s which is equal to this after shifting the takeoff point to a point before the summing point we are not going to shift the takeoff point from there to there but before we do that let's analyze the response of this circuit and we are saying x of s which is equal to this is simply equal to r of s and if we go to b z of s z of s is equal to c of s we are saying z of s is equal to these two are added it's r of s plus or minus y of s r of s plus of minus or y of s but we are also adding y of s in this direction but it's now reverse to what is happening there it's now minus plus y of s as shown so if we simplify this plus y minus y give us zero minus y of s plus y of s give us zero therefore z of s is equal equal to r of s z of s is equal to r of s so you can safely say the output must remain the same while moving the summing point from this point to a point after the summing block in other words it has remained r of s a summary of procedure for reduction of log diagrams and we are saying step one reduce or combine or cascade plex reduce or combine or parallel plex reduce or eliminate all minor feedback loops we've all done this and number four it is advisable to shift the takeoff points towards the right and the summing points towards the left and it is always better to avoid the rule nine and the rule ten please take note of our rule nine and the rule ten repeat steps one to four and two the simple form is obtained then find the transfer function of the overall system using c of s divided by r of s then hint as far as possible try to shift the takeoff points towards the right and summing points towards the left please take note of those important points we are going to reduce this block diagram and this is how we are going to proceed and we are saying g1 and g2 are in cascade and the equivalence is connected in parallel with g3 so that you can see so we are saying we are going to multiply the two we are going to reduce this to one block so it's now g1 and g2 and so it is in parallel with g3 so we are going to add g3 so we are going to say c of s divided by r of s uh, in other words we are going to combine these three into one and we have got our feedback path there we are going to say this is equal to g of s divided by one minus g of s h of s and our g of s is equal to g1 g2 plus g3 divided by one minus g1 g2 plus g3 or oh, this is multiplied this is equal to gs multiplied by h of s let us go let us proceed and see how it is going to be simplified fit 
find the single block equivalent of the figure below please we are going to follow the rules g1 and g2 are in series since they are going to combine them and this is going to be our transfer function these three are in parallel so the computation is g3 minus g4 plus g g3 minus g4 plus g5 we are going to reduce it to one block this is going to remain it has remained and h2 is also remained and our g6 is still there let us proceed to the next slide and see how we are going to simplify it first. What are we going to do? We are going to reduce this block into, we are going to form a, we are going to remove a, the feedback path. So we are simply going to multiply this by H1, H1. So it is going to be one block. Then this one is going to remain. We haven't eliminated the feedback path of H2. So we are saying the first internal feedback of fig A is reduced by its equivalent block, which is this. So we are going to proceed. Um, this is a cascade circuit. So we are going to multiply the Two. So we are going to have multiplied this with this and this simply goes to the numerator and this is going to remain. We are now going to re uh, remove the feedback path so that we only have got one block. Let us see how we are going to proceed. We are not going to reduce the, we are not going to remove the feedback path. And how do we remove the, the feedback path? This is our transfer function in the forward direction. In other words, this is our G of S. We are going to say divided by one because this is negative feedback. It's going to be a, a plus. Then this divided by this. If you can have a look at this is our circuit that we have got. So we have eliminated this feedback path. You know, our uh, closed loop formula that we use. So this is going to be our equation after removing the feedback path. So we now have got one black. If you do it stage by stage, you are going to get something like this. Then this is going to remain. These two blocks are in cascade. So we are going to multiply the two. So this is our reduced block diagram. We said the characteristic that distinguish open loop from a closed loop is feedback. So feedback is the characteristic of a closed loop control system. And we are saying it is that property of a closed loop control system which permits the output to be taken and it is compared with the input so that the appropriate control signal is used to for us to get the desired output. The presence of the feedback typically impacts the following properties of a control system. In other words, it increases accuracy. It affects the oscillation or the instability of a system. It reduces sensitivity. It reduces the effects of nonlinearities. It reduces the effects of environmental changes or external or noise disturbances. It also affects the bandwidth of a system. So we are going to analyze some of those impartations. This is a repetition. We simply say the transfer function, the Laplace transform of the output divided by Laplace transform of the input. This, the transfer function is put inside the block. Some observations can be drawn from this relationship that is the Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input. Number one, the control system transfer function is a system property. It is dependent only upon its internal structure and components as we saw the G1, G2, H1, H2. The transfer function is independent of the input, of the input signal applied to the system. And last but not least, when an input is applied to a closed loop control system and output is generated which is dependent not only upon the input but also upon the out upon the system transfer function these are the characteristic of negative feedback closed loop control system and we are saying its transfer function is generally less than one and the closed loop transfer function remains a finite value as long as the denominator is greater than zero because we know that if the denominator becomes zero it becomes uh, infinite then it com it is commonly used in control systems mm -hmm. uh, the characteristic of feedback of positive feedback closed loop control system it tends the closed loop transfer function tends to become very large as loop gain approaches one and it is generally restricted to specialized applications such as in oscillators remember your electronics when you looked at oscillators 
These questions are for you to practice. Please do not ignore them. Determine the overall gain of a negative feedback loss Lucas with a forward gain of 10 and a feedback of 2. A negative feedback loss system is subjected to an input of 5 volts. Determine the output voltage. The system has a forward gain of 1 and a feedback gain of 1. Determine the transfer function of a positive feedback loss loop system with a forward gain of 1 and a feedback gain of 0.5. So you must know the characteristic of positive and negative feedback. A positive feedback loss system was subjected to an input of 5 volts, determine the output voltage when the system has a forward gain of 1 volt and a feedback gain of 0 0.5. Unit feedback system. What do we mean by unit feedback system? It means that we are taking all of the output and feeding back to the input. In other words, our H of S is equal to 1. Hence, the transfer function is going to reduce to G of S divided by 1 plus G of S. Please take note that this is very, very important and I like it. You must understand what we mean by unit feedback system. We said this is negative feedback and this is positive feedback. And what are we saying? What is the effect of positive or negative feedback? This reduces gain. What is the effect of negative feedback? This increases gain. Why? Because this is always on the denominator as shown. So the, the bigger the denominator, the lower the gain. The smaller the denominator, the higher the gain. So the effect of, of negative feedback is that it reduces gain. Well, the effect of positive feedback is that it increases gain. What is the effect of feedback on stability? You will discover that we are now going to say this is our transfer function in the forward direction. And how do we find the closed loop transfer function? Is this divided by 1 plus this? You remember this equation of yours. So effectively, this is going to become K divided by S plus K of T. Right, we say that the stability of an amplifier is affected by the location of the pole. So it means that our pole is going to be located at S plus K plus T is equals to zero, which means S is equals to minus in brackets K plus T, as shown in the next slide, which is this. So we are saying, since the stability of a system depends upon the location of pores in a S-plane, feedback may improve the stability of the system. But this requires a proper design and application of the feedback. What is the effect of feedback on disturbance? We are saying disturbance may be noise. I want to summarize this. Negative feedback reduces the sensitivity of the control system to disturbance or to noise. That's the summary. We have got sensitivity in the forward path and we've got also sensitivity in the reverse path, which is in the feedback path. So we are saying the sensitivity of T with respect to G is less in the forward path than in the reverse path. And for, for, for sensitivity in the reverse path, we are looking at this parameter, which is the feedback path transfer function from the output to the input. And this is the equation. And, and please take note that our H of S is now on the numerator as well as on the denominator. So from this equation, we can, we can safely say a closed loop system is more sensitive to the variations in the feedback parameter, as we can see this H of S as well as this H of S compared to variations in the forward path parameters. We saw sensitivity in the forward path and this was the sensitivity. There is no H of S on the numerator. I hope guys you are able to follow these mathematical uh, concepts and we are saying we are now going to analyze the effect of feedback on time constant. You know what time constant is from your second theory or electrical engineering technology. This is the time taken for the voltage across a capacitor to increase to 63.2% of its final value or you can also define that in terms of if there is decay, if they or if the capacitor is discharging. So we are saying let this be our transfer function of a closed loop. And we are saying if the input guys take note that analysis we are doing that for a step input and we found the Laplace transform of a step of a step input which is close to one over S. And we are saying the transfer function is given as this and this over this is close to G of S. 
uh, we can safely say C of S, which is the, the output response, is equal to the transfer function multiplied by the reference input, which is R of S. And we know that the reference input R of S is the Laplace transform of the input, which is equal to 1 over S. So we have replaced the R of S by 1 over S. So the equation becomes this. We have divided by T throughout and this is the equivalent term and we have factored out k over t and and you know you how if we moved from there to there by finding the inverse placing this in a partial of fraction and we are saying t is the time constant of the open loop system we are now going to introduce the uh, feedback and after introducing the feedback we have introduced this uh, transfer function which is now h and the a closed the loop transfer function becomes equal to this this is transfer function in the forward direction and we know that it's one plus this from our uh, previous lectures if you simplify this it's going to simplify this and later to this after dividing throughout by a t and we are saying let the input of the uh, closed loop be a unit step function and we know that its Laplace transform is equal to S. We are simply trying to deduce the effect of negative feedback on time a constant because any control system takes time to for the uh, output to be exactly equal to the input or for the wanted output to be obtained. Let us go. How do you calculate the output response? This is called to the transfer function applied by the input signal and in this case is the reference input signal and our reference input signal we've assumed it is a step input and the Laplace transform of the step input is equal to 1 over s since we have replaced R of s with 1 over s and we have expressed this in partial fraction form and it is going to be this and after that we have found the inverse Laplace transform and this is our inverse Laplace transform and guys from your circuits on transients, capacitors and inductors we've got a time constant there that we have modified because of the feedback 2t divided by 1 plus kh this is the feedback path our h and we are saying if the value of h is positive and it is greater than 1 the 1 plus kh new term constant is greater than 1 and the response is faster therefore what are we saying this is the summary of all these derivations and if you just put in values you will see the effect of increasing the time constant you know what time constant is this is the time taken by a capacitor or an inductor for the voltage across it to rise to 63.2 percent of its final value so we are saying feedback improves the time response of a system and this is what we want we are now analyzing the effect of feedback on disturbance and we say that this disturbance can be noise. You know when we have got a communication system, anything foreign to that communication system is disturbance or noise. So for a communication system, anything foreign like this is what we call disturbance. So we are saying we've got some non-linearities like function dead zone etc that, af that affect the output of the system adversely but we are saying in spite of these non-linearities non -linearities, the output also become inaccurate due to some external disturbance so we are simply saying we've got two things that can affect our output one non-linearities and these are for example if you are using some transistors we know they are non-linear we know the the operation of transistors and diodes we have also some external disturbance that affect our output for example high frequency noise in electronic application thermal noise in amplifier tubes etc and we are saying we've got two parts the forward path and the feedback path and these two affect the output so we are saying we are now going to analyze the uh, transfer function at this point. So we are saying our output C of S, which is this point due to this input, the transfer function is equal to G of S, 
it, this is our g of s divided by one minus why are we saying minus because we, this is positive feedback please take note and in brackets you know our formula is g of s divided by one plus g of s h of s so this is is representing from our usual expression the h of s if we make c of s the subject of formula this is going to be our expression and this is going to change to a plus and we are saying if this expression there which is this expression is far far much greater than one the above equation becomes this one is going to drop of course and we are saying this suggests that g1 of s must be taken as large as possible to make the effect of disturbance this is our g of one so that this has got a negligible effect on the the input signal which is r of s it means that we must amplify this signal so that the output of this block is far far much high so that it won't be affected by the disturbance so we are saying hence this statement there to make the effect of disturbance on output as small as possible i think you appreciate your amplifier and we are saying or the effect of noise on a signal that if the noise overwhelm our signal the output will be noise so we want to make sure that our signal is not overwhelmed by noise so we are saying this gain they must be far far much greater than than even this gain which is this gain i think this is easy to to understand let's go this block is going to help us to analyze the effect of disturbance which is this signal there and we are saying to get the effect on, on disturbance alone let's assume that our reference input is equal to zero so if our reference input is equal to zero this is going to be the equivalent block diagram and guys can you deduce why there is minus one there let's proceed and see what is the effect of feedback on sorry the effect on disturbance or rather on the output a disturbance does not only affect the signal along the forward path it can also affect the signal from the output to the input which is along the feedback path and this is now our disturbance this signal is going to aid in this case to the signal being fed back from the output and eventually it is going to affect the error signal out of this summing point so let's analyze this mathematically control engineering is about laplace transform and we are going to do that and we are saying c of s divided by this disturbance it is going to give us this is going to be our block diagram this function which is this function it's after assuming that this is equal to zero it is going to be modified and it is going to appear like this and we are saying because this is a closed loop it is going to be one plus this expression there which is this expression and we are going to multiply it by h of one which is along the feedback path and we are going to assume that this expression there is far far much greater than one so this one is going to disappear and the equation is going to be the war all, all other terms are going to to cancel when we assume this so our expression is going to be the distance function is equal to minus one divided by this feedback this transfer function which is this along the feedback path and let us deduce the effect if we make c of s the subject of the formula it, it is going to be c of s is equal to this expression multiplied by this expression which means that this is our disturbance how can we cancel the effect of disturbance how can we cancel the effect of disturbance we have to make this as large as possible or we have to make it as small as possible so that our output response is 
what we want. This you can deduce mathematically because C of S is equal to this expression multiplied by the input disturbance which is caused to this expression. What this means is if this is very very large, if this is very very large, it means C of S is equal to zero. If if this is very very small, if this is very very small, it means that C of S is going to be this expression there. So you can deduce what is favorable or what is the ideal situation that we want to make H1 of S as large as possible or H1 of S as small as possible. Disturbance at the output. Instead of having a disturbance at the input like what we were seeing before, we now have the disturbance at the output of this block. So we are seeing what is the effect and we are seeing this is our transfer function, this is our output and this is our input and it's one divided by this expression there and it's going to simplify to this. After making this assumption, this is going to be our transfer function and what are we saying? We are simply saying our output is equal. This is the output due to this, the output due to this, which is this fact is there. Output due to noise is, re, is affected by changing the value of this is transfer function in the forward direction and transfer, transfer function in the reverse direction, which means that this factor there reduces the output due to the disturbance. And this disturbance can be anything at the output of the control system, be it noise, nonlinearity, etc, etc. And this is the modified block diagram after assuming that our R of S is equal to zero. We said dis disturbance can be anything from nonlinearity to noise and we are now analyzing the effect of noise. And we are saying this is our noise. It's being added to the by this, at this summing point and please take note that it is additive in this case. And we are saying the output C of S due to noise is what we are analyzing. Even in previous slides, we were analyzing the output due to disturbance. So the transfer function is equal to C of S, which is this divided by N of S, which is our noise. This is going to give us this transfer function there. And we are saying for a closed loop, because mind you, this is a N open loop, there's no feedback. If we, if we put, we are analyzing the effect of feedback on noise or on disturbance. So we are going to put our feedback path. So we are saying C of S divided by N of S, we know that this is equal to transfer function in the forward path divided by 1 plus this expression there, which is equal to this multiplied by this multiplied by this. So the effect is, if we want to make C of S, which is the output due to this input there, the subject of the formula we are going to C of S is close to this term multiplied by N of S and what is the effect? We are simply saying the if output due to noise is reduced by this expression which is the feedback path. So we are simply saying feedback which is this path there reduces the effect of disturbance or of noise. So in a closed loop the gain due to noise is decreased by a factor of this. In other words we are reducing the, the output due to noise. I think it has now become a clear the effect of noise on the wanted output. In this control engineering course, we have been looking at or we looked at two mathematical models, the differential equation model as well as the transfer function model. We are not going to have a look at state space model, but please take note that it is also a mathematical model that is used in control engineering. We are now summarizing and we are saying these are the techniques that you must use 
when you are given a problem that must be reduced. So we have looked at blocks connected in series, blocks connected in parallel, summing point, etc., etc. And we are simply saying you must check for blocks that are connected in series and you simplify. We looked at the rule for blocks that are connected in cascade or in series. So you must know how to simplify them. The same applies, looks for blocks that are connected in parallel and also simplify. Please, we have looked at how do we remove the, the feedback loop. So you look for blocks that are connected in the feedback path and you also simplify. Please take note, we have looked at how to move a takeoff point and also a summing point from right to left and also from left to right. So we are saying, if there is difficulty with the takeoff point while simplifying, shift it towards the right. The same applies. Shift the summing point also towards the left. We emphasized this. And we are going to re keep on repeating these steps one, two, five until we are left with a single block. Please note. The transfer function present in this single block is the transfer function of the overall block diagram, which is a simplified form. Guys, I assure you, in any of your exams or in your control engineering examination, you are going to encounter this problem where you will be required to simplify a given block diagram or a very big diagram which must be reduced to just a single block. So take note of this and also take note of the rules. We are now summarizing. Follow these steps in order to calculate the transfer function of the block diagram having four multiple inputs. So we are saying, number one, find the transfer function of the block diagram by considering one input at a time and make the remaining inputs zero. You are now analyzing a block with multiple inputs. So, you know, remember superposition in your data signal Processing, we analyze the effect of each input alone, making sure that all remaining inputs are set to zero. And you repeat this for every input. Then you get the overall transfer function by adding. This is simply superposition at a play. So we are saying the block diagram dashing process takes more time if the control system is complicated. Why? Because, guys, take note of this important point. You must make sure that you draw the partial simplified block diagram for each step. So to simplify this, you may reduce it in this way. You use the signal flow diagrams or graph and we'll be looking at it in our next chapter. This is a summary of rules and we are saying this is rule number one is for blocks connected in cascade and how, how is it reduced you have the the transfer function g1 and g2 and just one block for two blocks connected in parallel this is the equivalent or the reduced form g1 plus or minus g2 depending on whether it is positive or negative feedback positive for positive feedback sorry positive for negative feedback and negative for positive effect take note of that correction then um, we have reduced we have removed the feedback path and this is our equivalent and take note of the transfer function inside this block we have interchanged the summing points y and x We are continuing with the summary and we are saying we are moving a summing point to before a block from there to before this block C, G rather. And we are saying, please take note of the change. This becomes 1 over G so that the output C of S is the same as in this configuration. Moving a summing point after a block, this block can be moved from there to after this block and please take note of this term there also we can also move the takeoff point to and before a block as demonstrated so revisit your notes on this and the mathematical proofs especially the mathematical because you if you are given this expression you must be able to deduce that the output is the same